Hey, welcome back. Let's try this another time, shall we? Uh, skip scene. Oh, opening with that, huh? I dig it. Oh, doing the slam too. Okay. That's probably normal. Let's get some super missile. Oh. All right. I'm honestly surprised how well that other fight went, because, like... Uh, concentrating. Okay. Like, not only was it my first time beating the Queen Metroid without power bombs, turn on the lightning armor, otherwise you take constant damage in here. Get in here laying power bomb. You'll do a ton of damage to the next phase right up front, so, uh... And hey, these fire attacks, if you don't feel like dealing with them, just do that. <laughs> that does damage to her and it stops the attack, so hey, win-win. You can do it on this one, too. It's very handy, because those attacks are just super annoying and take forever, so, you know. I'm not going to stop this one, though, just because... Yeah. Oh, okay. Gonna have to spider ball this one. That's, like, the other main trick I wanted to show off, was canceling her fire attacks. It's a really nice thing to be able to do. Because you don't like the attack, you can just say no to it. But yeah, not only was that my first time uh, beating the Queen Metroid without using, like, power bombs, I did it on hard mode, no less, and... Um, I didn't really take so much damage, I just... This boss gave me so much trouble my first time in normal mode, I did not expect to have that good of a time. Also, I'm surprised my, like, hands were okay. I guess that's partially the benefit of having a good controller, because, like, the 3DS, not the most comfortable controller around, really. And because of the way I'm doing this, I just get to play with a proper controller, which is really nice. Alright, I'm gonna take some damage this time, because I ate up all my Aeon energy, but that's fine, because, as you can see, we skipped the final phase. <laughs> So that's a rough example of how quickly she can go down with those tricks in mind. And I'm sure a speedrunner can do much better than that, even. So it really just goes to show that fight took me so long and so many tries, and yet it can it can be brought down so quickly and easily. Anywho, uh, on to the end. It's a baby Metroid! Aw, oh, but it's kinda cute, though. I like that little shot from inside her visor for a moment. Well, Samus, you are now a mother. How do you feel? They did a pretty good job making that little Metroid adorable somehow. Uh, I'll take off the ice beam now, and, uh... Honestly, I could just get rid of that Metroid count, but, uh... Uh, there's a reason, because of the way it, it, it all works. With my setup, it'll be best if I just leave, leave that alone, honestly. There's something in here. Oh, and yeah, as you saw, uh, the baby Metroid is what eats the crystals. You probably already knew that, if you're at all familiar with the series, but if you didn't... Hey, that's cool, right? 
It's a nice, uh, it's a nice little thing where, you know, Samus spares the baby Metroid and then it turns out to be, like, the only way you can get out of this place. And I do mean the only way you can get out of this place, because if you do actually, uh, well, I think, yeah, I think we needed it to even reach, like, a, a fast travel point, too, anyway. Um, I don't... I've not actually explored how that works in the original. I think you do need the Baby Metroid to get out in the original, too. Um, in the case of this game... I mean, we definitely did, because we were, like, stuck in that area, I believe. Um, and I think that's how it works normally, too, in the original. But, um... The other factor of it, even if we, like, go ahead and, like, once we get to the quick travel, if we take that back to the start of the game, uh, it's blocked off. For whatever reason, the area is, like, caved in now, so we can't actually get out of, like, the kind of Chozo Ruins entrance that we came in through. We have to find another way back to our ship, which is what the baby Metroid is leading us to. And of course, uh, there are a few items throughout the game that we could not get to, which we now can. The Baby Metroid was what we needed all along to get those last few items! No! Let me up there! That worked, somehow. I'll take it. Oh, uh, so, with those items I just picked up... Oh yeah, okay, that's right, they were still, uh... Yeah, that there. Though it looks like I'm missing something else, kinda. Hmm. Oh, what? Okay, well, I'll... How did I miss that? I'll go back for that in a bit, I guess. Yeah, it looked like I was still missing another item, and I was. That's all right. It's no problem. Oh, I like that nice music. Don't know why there's like an alcove there. Well, this music is good too, though. It's a uh, kind of a tie-in because this is basically the music you hear at the start of Super Metroid. So that's sort of appropriate, too. We are no longer in Area 8. We are actually... on the surface. So pretty soon, we'll loop back around to where the ship is, but, uh... When I get the chance, I'm gonna take a, uh, quick travel point to go pick up... items that are still missing. Because... 100% does, uh... Give you some cool lore stuff. I don't know if I mentioned that at any point, um, this whole time. Let me up there! There we go. Thank you! But, yeah, um, I don't think that's a thing I've mentioned this whole time. There's a, there's a gallery mode, which, um, you unlock pictures in it based on, like, your item completion percentage. And when you get 100%, well, you get all of them. And it kind of tells the story of what happened here on SR388. Before, uh, well, like, a long time ago, really. An unspecified 
amount of time ago. Uh, we don't really know how long ago, but before we got here, basically. Now, that's the way out. I'm still missing something. Huh. So, I must have missed something in the ruins? Don't tell me I'm gonna have to edit this video. Hmm. Well... What did I miss? Uh, well... Let's just start by going back to Area 8. I'm... because I needed the Metroid for that there. And also, I missed an item up there, so let's go get that first. I like how the Metro joins you on the, uh, the warp screen. I mean, it makes sense. It's just neat to see the Metroid with you everywhere. Even on the, like, elevator and teleporter screens. Can't believe I have to go back through all this just for, like, that one item, whatever it is. Oh, now there's a bunch of enemies that weren't here, <laughs> that weren't here before? Come on. I like how it's still playing the same music it was when there were, like, Metroids here, too. They probably figured... Well, on the one hand, I was gonna say, they probably figured most people wouldn't come back here like this. And yet, on the other hand, they actually bothered to, like, spawn in enemies when you've taken care of all the Metroids, so... I don't know. I feel like they could have just played the same music from the previous area, and that would have been good. Uh, I can't believe I totally just, like, missed that there was an item on the map there. That's a shame. Could have saved us some time. Alright. Now, let's head back to that war point. Alright. Now we go to the warp point, the other warp point in this area. And go get that item I marked. I should have marked... Like I said before, I really should have marked the uh, spots like that in the other look areas, but... I'm sure it won't be too bad to find everything. Uh, I didn't mean to step on that. That's what I wanted to do. Good thing I, uh, opened up that shortcut. So it doesn't take quite so long to get over here. There we go. Now that should be... 100%. Excellent. I'm just gonna leave that marker there, because I don't care. Now just quickly get back over to the warp point, and take a bunch of damage on the way. <laughs> and let's see. I think there was something in... yeah, okay. Oh good, I marked that one too. I forgot that I did mark the one in Area 7. Ah, uh, even if it's just for a few seconds, it's nice to get to hear this song again.
I actually listen to this song a bunch outside of playing the game. I really like it a lot. Get down here, try not to die in the process. Thank you, baby Metroid. And all the way down here. Just the regular old missile tank, apparently. It's a cool little area, though. Feels kind of important somehow, but I can't really- I couldn't really tell you how. That's 100% for this area. Now to just get back to that same warp point we came here from. Man, it took a lot of, a lot of damage on the way here. It'll be okay. I think. So that's 100. I like that you can check the completion percentage uh, on the, like, area select here. That's very useful. Now, let's see. I just gotta look for... Oh, I think... Was this, like, the one here? No, that doesn't look like it. Hmm. Where is this item, anyway? Oh, I see it. Okay, I couldn't see it underneath the big old teleporter symbol. I thought that there was one like this, where it was like right underneath this uh, teleporter like this, but I just I couldn't see it. So that one's like pretty nice and painless. Ooh, there's an energy recharge station right over there. I kind of want to use that. Ah, <sighs> of course. Metroid games love their fall blocks. Ah. Okay, can I not die on the way to the healing station? <laughs> oh, you were still alive. <sighs> oh, it's okay. I made it. Delicious, delicious life energy. Now, let's get on out of here. I wish all the items that required the Metroid were like this, where they were just like literally right by a uh, teleporter. None of them are really too bad, but it would have been nice if they were all as convenient as that one. Okay, that one... yeah, that'll do. Alright, so I went the wrong way when I teleported here the first time. I'm just gonna cut that out and pretend it didn't happen. Except that I just told you it happened. Yeah, underneath this area there was this one. I'm a little concerned about that item that I'm apparently missing on the surface. I think I might have an idea. I have an idea of where to look for it. I just don't know why it's not on the map. I, maybe I just never got close enough to it. I didn't really do scan pulses and yeah, I mean, maybe I just didn't go anywhere near where it was and that's why it's not like showing up on the map. 
Uh, I hope so. Um, okay, yeah, that's 100% here. So that's 100% everywhere except the surface, right? Correct. Okay. Now, if it's what I'm thinking, it'll just be in this, like, general area. That kind of checks out, too, because, like, they do kind of put these Metroid-only items somewhat close to... No, not that way. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Down this way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Wait, was there... Was it possible for me to get that without the Metroid? I don't... I didn't think that one was, but... But why would... Oh! Did I... Could I have come here during the backtracking with a power bomb? Well, shoot. Uh... Oh well, I mean, uh, whatever. That's 100%, so... So, all that's left to do is, uh... Go to, back over to this one. All that's left to do is get to our ship and end of the game. Baby Metroid, if you would. Thank you very much. It's all stormy and ominous out here now. Well, let's be on our way. Oh, it's not over that easily. Brand new to the remake. This fight with Ridley. And it is challenging. I'm going to turn on the lightning armor before I forget. You definitely want to turn on the armor, because uh, this fight is actually a little bit tough. I didn't have as much trouble with it as I did with the Metroid Queen, but it did give me some trouble. It took me more than one try. It took me a few tries. And uh, the lightning armor is good because it'll soak up some damage. And uh, there are points in the fight where you'll get some Aeon energy back, but you will never get HP back. So yeah, let your Aeon energy soak up some of the damage while you can. I really like that this ties into Metroid Prime too, because like, he's got some of the mechanical stuff he had in the Prime games. I think that's really cool. Kind of reinforces that like, uh, they are actually kind of canon. Oh, that's a full recharge. I see your wings have grown back, Ridley. You're almost healed, aren't you? Let's see if we can do something about that. Don't ever speak to me or my child ever again. Yeah, he's not gonna go down that easily. This is Ridley we're talking about. Side scroller! I like how we kinda got an upgraded beam for this. It seems like I can fire it more quickly, and it seems like I'm firing charge shots constantly, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. It looks like it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, that looks the same, doesn't it? Oh.
really does have some new attacks here. Oh, is he gonna... Yep. Charged me. When he puts his tail on the ground like that, he could be about to, like... It depends on the animation slightly. He could be about to raise up some ground pillars, which you want to just get airborne, or he could be about to, like, dash towards you. And, of course, he's got this cool attack. Okay, I don't like being that close to him and at a wall. You don't want to be back... You don't want to be between a rock and a Ridley. That's the hardest place of all to be in. Oh! You're gonna... yeah. Go down already! You're looking pretty red there, but you're not going down. There we go. This fight does get a lot easier when you realize the lightning armor exists. Uh oh. Oh, that's not good. Maybe next went to the rescue. Okay, not entirely, but that was helpful. Oh, Ridley's angry. Makes sense. I'd be angry too if someone tried to suck all my life on review weight. Ah. Yeah, this fight gets a lot easier when you realize the lightning armor exists. Because... Otherwise, like, you don't get any health back during the phases, as you've noticed. It's just the Aeon energy, so they really are expecting you to use this. It's almost unfair how much easier it makes this, actually. That's kind of... I think the reason I was having trouble at first, too, was because I didn't even think to do this at first. My controller um, stopped responding. That, that sucks. I was having problems with that earlier. I managed to sort them out, but it's starting up again. Just in time for the finale, huh? Well, I was complaining about the lightning armor making us too easy, and I uh, just kind of got some of my Aeon stolen from me by that, so I guess that works out. Yeah, it's gone. Any damage I take now is going to be permanent. And as far as I recall, Ridley hates like a truck, so... Let's try to avoid that, shall we? Get him! Yeah, eat it, Ridley. Literally eat my beams! Pretty long fight, huh? <laughs> it's a good fight! Like I said, it is actually challenging. It it earns its spot as the final boss. Even if I think the Queen Metroid was harder, it's... It is fittingly long and challenging for being the final fight. This is the hardest time I've ever had with Ridley in any of the games. Oh! I just kind of stood there and took that one. Whoops. Sit down already, you big piece of crap! Yeah! You do have to mash that beam button when you're doing those grapples, too. It's not automatic. Same goes for the missiles throughout the game. When I was grappling Metroids and stuff, you gotta mash the button. And you have to hold down the missile button in the grapple, otherwise you just fire the beam. I held- I didn't hold down missiles for Ridley because he's- from what I remember, they just dink off of him during that, uh, at least I think so. I'm pretty sure you had to use the beam to hurt him. 
<sighs> that was a good fight, though. I like that. It is sort of questionable in one way, because it's like... Like, really, really showed up on SR388 and got the crap beaten out of him. And then he still showed up, like, immediately to kidnap the baby Metroid from Ceres Station. <laughs> eh. It's a really cool fight, though. And I like the tie-in to Metroid Prime with uh, the armor and everything. So that was Metroid Samus Returns hard mode, 100%. Uh, I had a good time. It's nice to... It's kind of nice to have something going up on my channel. It's Commentary is a thing that is feels a little unnatural for me, but... I don't know. It's... I kind of enjoyed getting to do it. This is a game I want. I felt like I wanted to show off, and I wanted to be able to share my thoughts a little bit. Um, this music, <laughs> yeah, Super Smash Brothers is my favorite Metroid game. But yeah, um, I'm glad I could share my thoughts with this and uh, maybe show it to certain people who wouldn't have seen it. Because, like I said, this one did get overlooked a little bit too. Uh, that's not really as much of a concern with Dread, I don't think, but, well, then again, I am specifically doing Dread because I can sh uh, someone's gonna get to see it who might not have, uh, right away otherwise, I think. But anyway, um, as far as my final thoughts on this game, I feel like I already said a lot of what I was gonna say, um, throughout the game, and especially, like, I'm pretty sure I was gonna talk about some of this, uh, in the post-commentary video. I haven't actually recorded that post-commentary yet, but I'm pretty sure I've made my thoughts clear, uh, throughout, but I can summarize here again anyway. Um, I really like this game. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's pretty challenging, and I think it's kind of weird for a Metroid game to go that hard on challenge. To me, Metroid has never been synonymous with, like, super hard, tough gameplay. It, if they want to take the series in that direction, that's fair, but... I feel like I would have preferred if they just made it more accessible and actually had an easy mode for people who would have uh, benefited from it. But for me personally, I did enjoy the level of challenge. Uh, it was good for me. I just think it's a shame that it might be a bit much for some people and there's no real way to mitigate that. Um, but the boss designs are good. Uh, it's fun. This is... Maybe my favorite version of Metroid 2? It's hard to say for sure. I mean, I think whether I'd have more fun playing this or AM2R depends on my mood, but... Well... Uh, I don't know. It's, uh... You know, you'd like them for different reasons. I might just like this one more, but it's, it's very subjective. But either way, they're both very good. Um, this is very good. I like that it ties into uh, Metroid... Like, it ties Metroid Prime into the canon with Ridley having the... Mechanical enhancements, um, and there's a couple other tie-ins, too. There's a tie-in coming up after the credits, actually, to another game after this. And, uh, the gallery I'm gonna show you soon, after the credits, too, has a tie-in to the future with, uh, well, something past Fusion. Powered by Mercury Engine. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, it's different game feel-wise. I may not love everything about the way it feels, but it is a pretty fun game. Um, I really like it, and uh, we'll see how they improve on things with the next game. My clear time's probably not great, since uh, I went to... Yeah. Oh, wait! Oh, I actually got the not worst ending. Uh, Samus just keeps her helmet on if you take longer than eight hours. I actually came under eight. Um, the best ending is under four hours, but I'm surprised I got the under eight with 100% item completion. I and commentating. How? What? <laughs> All right. 
Um, and yeah, on hard mode, uh, so they change your appearance depending on what difficulty you're playing, and in hard mode, it's a throwback to the NES game, where she had green hair because of, like, a limited color palette. That's kind of cool. Um, the suit, also, if you if you get under four hours, uh, as far as I'm aware, it looks like the NES one. So that's a it's a cool little throwback to the, to the NES day. I really thought that was going to be over eight hours. <laughs> And all right, uh, before we end, there's this post credit stinger. <laughs> We've got Ridley's, like, mechanical army left behind. And we've got that thing. That's very not good. That's a tie-in to Metroid Fusion. Um, if by some chance you're someone watching this who's not really like aware of that and how that ties in, I would probably recommend you find somewhere to play or watch Metroid Fusion before you go like watching playing Dread. You don't really have to because it'll just like it'll actually recap the events of uh, Dread will recap the ev events of Fusion if you're not familiar with them, because they're important. But, uh... I think you you, you could do with uh, seeing it, probably. Anyway, here's the gallery we unlocked. So we've got the Chozo's arrival on SR388. You can see the creatures around and stuff. I think there's, like, a wiki uh, article, or maybe it's a fandom article, I forget. But uh, that kind of tries to describe all these images really well, uh, better than I will. But you'll get the gist. You could go look that up if you want to. Um, you can see them going into the caverns and stuff, and they're probably encountering all this like hostile wildlife. Oh, it looks like uh, they're actually siphoning the energy off of these creatures, though, somehow. I kind of missed that before. That might be... Yeah, actually, that might be... That looks like a reference to the Aeon energy, if I think about it. So that's like the Chozo harnessing the Aeon energy uh, native to this place that the creatures just have for some reason. And then you've got them coming in with all the robots and stuff. You can see the digger knot there. So that was built by the Chozo. The shows who really are responsible for a lot in the series, good and bad. Um, I mean, they built Samus' power suit, but also, like... Uh, if you're going by the manga, they built Mother Brain. I don't know if that's really canon. Mother Brain might just be a construction of the space pirates as far as the games are concerned. But, uh... Either way, though, the Chozo are a highly advanced technological race. They built Samus' power suit, they built all these robots, and... They built one of the hardest bosses in this game, so... And then, of course, in the midst of, uh... You know, making their, like... Doing their thing on this... On this planet, they ran across... The parasites that we saw in the post credit stinger. Those... Pose a pretty big problem. So, from the looks of things, the Chozo created the Metroids. And the Metroids were used to combat the parasites that are uh, so dangerous on this planet. And then for a time, the Chozo and the Metroids they created just kind of lived in harmony, doing their thing. However... Once the Metroids started evolving, they started turning against their masters and becoming aggressive. So, uh... That's really bad. The 
And Chozo had to seal them away, deep underground, and never to be seen again. That's where the gates came from, the purple fluid and stuff. We've got the shot of the warriors, and that might be like an Omega or and or a Zeta in the background. Hard to tell. And then we've got this shot of uh, the elders greeting some like general that showed up that you know came back or something. I don't know. Uh. Whoever that Chozo is, he's got an arm cannon that's kind of reminiscent of Samus's, and he killed the Chozo elders. And maybe it took control of the army or whatever, it's hard to say exactly. The meaning of this image is vague, somewhat on purpose, but... One thing that seems pretty evident is... A powerful Chozo warrior with an arm cannon and uh, an antagonistic sort of character, which is not something we're used to seeing the Chozo portrayed as. That's surely going to be important in a future game. Maybe even the next game I'm going to play, hmm? Uh, I guess we'll have to see about that, but uh, at any rate, that does it for Metroid Samus Returns. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me go through this. I'm glad I got the chance to do it. I had fun doing it. Um, commentary is still something that doesn't feel like entirely natural to me to do, but I still like to try doing it once in a while. Uh, it's fun to try, try different things, you know? So, uh, yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you are so inclined, I will see you very soon for a hard mode playthrough of Metroid Dread. Until then, take care of yourself, and I'll see you then. Or else, in some other video, perhaps.